All right, my friends, welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are doing fantastic. I came across this right here. We're going to discuss it. Definitely share comments down in the comment section below. And again, you know, it's about group writing and things like that. It's really kind of one of those topics that is kind of cool to know more about it because, you know, writing in a group to me is awesome. I love it and I enjoy it very much. But if you show up to the group on the wrong way or the wrong, you know, you do the wrong thing, you're going to piss people off. And not only that. It could become from being really fun to be really unsafe. You could hurt people. So, again, you know, having the right expectation or something like that is always a good thing to have, right? So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Like I say, I definitely appreciate that. This is coming from Old State and uh, came across this article right here. Group rides can become dangerous due to the following reasons, according to the Motorcycle Safety Foundation. It says here, riders covering too much of the roadway. Driving side by side, mix mixing riders on various skills level. That makes total sense. Riding falling behind the group. So I'm gonna say a couple things about this. Then we're gonna talk about some of the things that they recommend right here. But obviously, this is something that a lot of people don't do. Ride side by side. I do ride side by side, and I tell you, I have some thoughts about that. I really have some thoughts about that. And uh, primarily, it's gonna be simple. Keep your head in the game. Really keep your head in the game because when you ride side by side, you first of all, you have to trust the guy next to you. You have to trust people behind and in front of you. So don't do it with anybody out there. But you definitely got to keep your game, you know, your head in the game because, again, you are splitting that row that happens to be, you know, you know you're making it smaller, right? You, you're reducing the space that you have by 50%. So if you don't feel comfortable doing that, if you don't feel like you have the skills to do that, don't do it, right? Don't do it. And, and, and again, take your time. I do have some thoughts on how to practice to get better writing side by side. And I know this is kind of like a, a controversial topic. But again, you know what? I'm not saying don't do it. Do it. I, I do it all the time. But at the same time, be aware that it takes some skills and be aware that you actually have to know what you're doing, right? So again, Mixing right, mixing writers with various skills. I see this all the time. Writing in a group, uh, some guys don't know what they're doing, and uh, some guys want to push it because essentially they're trying to like show up or you know trying to be part of the group. And next thing you know, it could become really unsafe. You always hear people saying, "Write your own ride." Uh, if you think that you can't keep up, don't really don't because you could hurt somebody, right? And again, you know, you see the other one here, writing falling behind the group. But let me kind of come up here. And kind of talk about some of these topics that they have here. They actually have 10 different ones. And, uh, yeah, let's do the first one right here. Be prepared Be prepared before going to the ride. This is a big one. This is a big one. Uh, just recently, not recently, like six months or something ago, uh, we're doing a ride. And, uh, you know, it was a lot of bikes. I'm talking like hundreds of bikes. And uh, it was a police escorted ride. And you see people trying to ride with some people, right? Because you have your friends there. So you have motorcycles that came. And next thing you know, you know, maybe 15, 20 minutes later, there's people that come over and be like, hey, I want to ride with that guy over there. And we're like, dude, we're staging. We're staging motorcycles. You can't, you really can't go into that position because there's other bike and we ain't going to move all these bikes just to accommodate you, right? So be prepared before you go on a ride. If you know you're going to ride with that person in this massive group meet up with the guy at a gas station right hey let's meet up at this place we all gonna meet up together we all gonna go into the staging area together so we could just stage and we could be together so we could ride together there's nothing wrong with that but if you're gonna show up to the staging area and then you want to push motorcycles out of the way it's just gonna create chaos it's gonna create issues and it says right here look fuel your motorcycle definitely have fuel no one is going to stop for you to put fuel, right? When you take off in a group, you take it up in a group, and you're also going to have, like, schedule. Again, you're going to have schedule times so that you're going to stop and put fuel together if the ride is going to be that long, right? So show up with a full motorcycle, um, with a motorcycle full of gas, obviously. It says here, carry a cell phone in case of an emergency. That's just, like, borderline for everything nowadays. Everybody has a cell phone. Have a cell phone in case of emergency and obviously you guys know if something happened call 911 right don't call your buddy you know if somebody goes down call 911 your buddy unless your buddy's a doctor is right there right uh call 911 so they could provide some service it says you should also have at least one righty one rider excuse me carrying a first aid kit and a toolkit look i got this in my motorcycle i have a small first aid kit 
Uh, also have a little tool kit that I have utilized already. You know, if you got a Harley, you know, Harleys are going to break. Uh, but I would take a step forward. First aid kit. Yeah, I have one, but also know how to use it. If you have a first kit that you don't know how to use, it's really is nothing, right? Unless somebody's there that know how to use it. As well as all the necessities in your group that you may need. Here's a couple things that I have. I have a bunch of things in my motorcycle, but I do have... Uh, a jumper to jump a motorcycle in case you know the battery goes down. I got a I got a first aid kit. I got a tool kit. I got some sunblock, right? In case somebody wants some sunblock. I got my cold weather equipment in there. In case it gets cold, I put my jacket on. Obviously, I got a bagger, so I have a trunk and I have space to put all that stuff. So as you ride, you're gonna come out with things that you may need that you put it in there, right? And be prepared. Make sure. To me, it's one of those things here where it says be prepared before you're going into the ride. If it's going to be a long ride, recently we went to Alabama and, uh, you know, it was a long ride. It took us, you know, seven, eight hours. I don't know. It took us a long time, right? Uh, we service our bikes. So, again, I don't know what kind of what kind of ride you're doing. Maybe you're doing a ride around the city. It's different. But if you're going to be in a group and it's going to go out of state, like we went from Florida to Alabama, you know, we service the bike to make sure the bike has oil, make sure tire pressure. I brought a tire pressure kit. We, we brought a, a passion kit in case we had a flat tire. We brought a bunch of stuff, right? Zip ties. We zip tie some things that we had to bring. For example, in Florida, you don't wear a helmet, but in Alabama, you do. So we brought our helmets and we brought things that we knew we were going to need. So obviously you got to be prepared, right? So again, think about this one. Think about the things that you need and, and you could go, you know, you could go crazy with that. No hem signals. I guess that's kind of like one of those things that you should know. There are some hand signals that you may have uh, that are pretty standard, excuse me, pretty standard. But also, you know, if you ride with a group of guys, there may be some hand signals that you do with those group of guys. Make sure that you know, right? Now, this is a big one right here. Pre-ride meeting. I uh, love this. A lot of times we do pre-ride meetings. We also pray, you know, before we take it off and things like that. But a pre-ride meeting is good. You know, I always think about the military right before we did a mission. We did a, we did a meeting and we talked about a specific things that we needed right? Specific things that we needed. And uh, uh, it is what it is, right? Some of the things that you could cover is the route. You know, this is the route we're going to take. This is the, this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be leaving from this point. We're going to make it to this point. If we need to put gas, we're going to stop here. This is the schedule stops that we already have in place. They may talk about some things like, hey, putting gas and things like that. Maybe you have a bagger with a six gallon tank, but maybe you have a little sporty with whatever it amount of fuel that motorcycle has so you know you got to pull fuel because the other guys may not have to put fuel so again the pre-meeting could cover the route could cover the schedule stuff could cover it you know who's gonna the formation type hey this is how we're gonna ride uh this is what we're gonna do at this specific location don't miss that out right don't miss that out i'm telling you don't miss that out because that may give you some information that when you see the pack doing something and you weren't there you're gonna be lost you're gonna be like what is everybody doing well everybody's doing what we talked about in the pre-meeting and no one showed up you know uh discuss hand signals that the group should know it says right here so again uh, some things like what's going to happen if you have a breakdown, right? What are we going to do? Uh, what's going to happen if you can't keep up with the pack? What some choices that you could do? And you know what? Here's the thing about the pre-meeting. You could ask questions, right? You could be like, hey, what about this? What about that, right? So, again, I don't want to hold this as a military mission that we're going to go and take over something. Uh, but it should provide some decent information, right? So, number four here says select group lead. Uh, consider having the most experienced writing in the league. Uh, again, you know, this is, this is something that, uh, depends, you know, I see, I seen formations where there is a very strict formation. And I also seen formations where like, Hey, you know, whoever showed up first, uh, is going to go in the front and, and it is what it is. But again, it's going to be decided. Whoever makes those decisions, it is what it is. But I tell you what, me personally, if you are one of those persons that maybe you're having some difficulties and you don't think you're going to keep up, or maybe you have a, an old bike that you want to go in the back just in case, hey, take your place. Take your place wherever you think you're going to be able to ride a lot better, right? If you think you're going to be able to do better in the back, stay in the back. If you think you're going to be better uh, in the front or in the middle and you happen to fall in there, there's no, you know, there's no issues to me if you say, look, man, I'm going to go to the back because I don't feel comfortable, you know, because if you don't, you're not going to keep it safe. You're going to keep it on safe. And, and again, you know, somebody could get hurt. Motorcycles are fun, but motorcycles are very, very dangerous. So there's no, 
I mean, I'm not going to like judge you because you were like, hey, look, I want to ride in the back because I don't feel comfortable. Or I want to ride next to my buddy in the back because I don't feel comfortable. You know, we all start at one point. Remember this. We all start at one point. I remember riding with people back in 2011, I think it was, or 2010. And uh, I didn't feel comfortable. And it took me some time, right? So, again, uh, yeah, there. it is what it is, right? It is what it is. Keep your group site manageable. I, I mean, here... Here's the thing. Let me go back to the right one right there. Here's the thing. You know, it depends what ride you want to do. Like we did a ride uh, that was September 11 ride. And I tell you, the, the 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 pack was huge. I've been in packs that are really, really big in I-95, which is the main highway. And it has been like long enough for you to be like, wow, you could see the whole pack way up there. Right. So, again, sometimes you're not going to have you're not going to have any take on that if you want to participate in something awesome like hey we're doing the september 11 ride i want to be part of that because obviously we want to honor uh the people that lost their life and things like that and it's just going to be a big pack but i tell you what i love riding with like four people four six people i think it's great four six people you you know you know those guys you know where you're going you know how you're going to do it you know six people is really nice to be able to manage a, a nice formation so that's just me but again you know what sometimes Unless you're setting up this ride, but if you are coming to participate as part of a ride, you're just going to have to ride where, you know, whoever is there. But again, there's going to be a lot of personal uh, preference here. Stagger your ride information. This is a this is a big one. You know, some many places don't really uh, talk about riding side by side. Many places don't really recommend that. I totally get it. Like I was saying in the video, you kind of reducing your space by 50 percent. Stagger to me is a, a really safe uh, formation. And if you don't know what stagger is, it's essentially, you know, motorcycle here, motorcycle here, motorcycle here. So you kind of like maintain your aisle and, uh, you know, again, you stagger, right? So it's one of those things that here, actually, let's read this right here. Uh, just so we could talk about it. Consider a stagger formation where the leader rides to the left of the lane. Then the second riding should position themselves to the right of the lane. And again, MSF, uh, recommends riders at this rider stays at least one second apart in distance. Yeah, I mean, stagger formation is, is, is a great formation. Uh, people like to ride that way. It's very safe. Uh, no complaints. And a lot of times when you see a lot of guys riding, that's what they right. Stagger formation. So, again, figure it out. The point here is to figure out what kind of formation they're going to do. Because I tell you what, and I've I done this in the past. You show up to a place and you don't feel comfortable riding side by side and you may be a little bit intimidated. You may be a little bit like, whoa, I don't think I could do that now. Now you're stressing out. Now you think you can't do it. Now you could cause an accident. So, again, figure out the formation so you don't find any surprises. You know you could ride stagger. Do the stagger. And, again, you know, if you go to a big ride and you don't feel comfortable, remember, there's nothing wrong with you saying, hey, I can't do it and kind of back up a little bit front it right but essentially what you're gonna see is typically you're gonna see stagger or side by side again i'm i could do both um and, and you know i'm okay with it but again for you guys doing this for the first time try to figure out which one you're gonna do right let's see the uh number seven stay aware of your groups right as well on the road yeah a hundred percent be aware be aware. This is just a motorcycle, you know, just like riding a motorcycle. Just be aware of what's going on around your surroundings and uh, be aware of what's going on, you know, where the riders are, right? If one guy, you you know, you're riding, let's say, stagger, you know, you, I'm in the ride, you know, right behind you to the left, there's going to be another guy. So you should not go in his lane because he may get close to you. So always be aware where everybody is. That's just really good safety tip. I'll tell you what, a couple of days a couple days ago, a week or so ago, I was riding and I was going I-95. I was going side by side and I had a car that came right next to me, like right next to me. Like he put his window down. There were some things that happened there. I'll tell you maybe a different day. I'll tell you a story on that. But, you know, I'm thinking to myself, man, this guy is getting really close to me. And at one point I kind of had to, you know, signal to the guy like, hey, you know, you got to kind of separate from me. So, again, very, very unsafe for somebody to get so close to a motorcycle. And you got to be aware because if it would have hit me, you know, I could hit the guy next to me or something like that. You could just got to be a got to be aware. Right. Motorcycles. You got to be aware where everybody's at, uh, what's going to happen, you know, where 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 people are positions and all that. And if you understand the formation, you're going to understand where people are right so again one of those things 
to know, have a plan if a writer gets separated. Not only that, have a plan if somebody, you know, breaks down as well, right? Have a procedure in place ahead in time in case a writer and your group gets separated. And again, you know, that's one of the things right there. And I tell you what, if you go to the pre-meeting, somebody probably is going to cover that, right? Somebody is going to talk about that. Number nine, know what to do if somebody leaves the group. I kind of like this one is kind of weird because I tell you what, sometimes you're writing in a group. And you got to understand that if you go to a big ride, there's going to be little little groups inside the big groups, right? Like there's going to be people that are going to come together and there's going to be people that are going to be there uh, riding with friends. And again, they only want to do one part of the ride. And it's very common for have a huge formation going. And at one point, four guys takes off, right? Again, if that's not your friends and you don't know them, it's fine. But if you are part of the group and you maybe you're trying to, you know, keep the group together or something like that, and a couple guys start leaving, you don't know what's going on. You may think somebody got sick, somebody got hurt, or something happened and this and that. So, again, it's kind of nice if somebody say, hey, I'm going to do this part of the ride, I'm, and then I'm going to take off. So people are just aware because, you know, we tend to worry about you know, our brothers and people that ride motorcycles, we're a tight community. And if you see a guy taking a right turn going somewhere, you may think, hey, what happened to him? So just a little bit of communication, it'd be all right, right? Take plenty of breaks. I tell you what, this is the last one right here. And I tell you, I went to Alabama just recently. Like I said, I was in a, in a pack of uh, several guys and uh, we, we took a break. Every hour and 10 minutes around there, we stopped. We walked around, we went to the bathroom, we laid down, we took a 10, 15 minute break, and then we jumped back in the bike. It did us so much better, right? If you tried to push it, you may be sore, you may be tired. And, uh, you know, when you started getting tired on a motorcycle on a highway, it's not a good idea. Really not a good idea. So you want to take a break, just that 10 minute break, stopping at a rest area real quick and just, you know, sitting down for a second or laying down in one of those picnic tables and take a five minute break breeder and using the bathroom man it kind of like makes you energize again to continue so again if you're going to go into a ride that is seven eight hours away and you're going across state a state line prepare your stopping you know talk about hey when are we going to stop and don't be scared to stop and take a break because i tell you what those 10 minutes it's going to push you to do that next hour, right? If you continue to push, you may get tired. Something may happen. You may cause an accident, and that's just not cool. So, again, came across this. Let me know what you think. Share some comments down below. And as always, God is in control.